American and NATO troops are fighting, are in combat with insurgent fighters in Afghanistan. The coalition and U.S. death toll in June was as high as it has ever been in the war in Afghanistan. But it also seems clear that no one thinks the end game, the goal in Afghanistan, is a battlefield victory. What they say is that the goal is an Afghan government that serves its people and thereby crowds out the possibility of the Taliban coming back and bringing al-Qaeda with them. That's the goal. That's what we have said we would call success. Beyond the military effort there, headed up, of course, by General Petraeus now, there's also our embassy, our ambassador there, former General Carl Eikenberry. And there's America's special representative to Afghanistan and Pakistan, Richard Holbrook. The man credited, of course, with brokering the end to the war in Bosnia with the Dayton Peace Accords. The larger-than-life old Washington hand who has been a diplomat for every Democratic administration in this country, going back to JFK and the Vietnam War. The man who is now charged, essentially, with figuring out how this all ends in Afghanistan. I came to Washington today to sit down with Richard Holbrook for the interview. Mr. Ambassador, um, thanks very much for this time. I know that you are uh, not only always busy, but in particular <laughs> right now you're really busy, so thank you. Well, it's, it's, uh, it's great to see you. That was a great set of shows you did from Afghanistan. Oh, thank you. Those are the best television from a war zone since Stephen Colbert went to Iraq. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's very kind of you. Yeah. Hi, uh, Stephen. It, well, you didn't shave your head. I mean, no. That's a big step forward. Although I was hot enough that I sort of wanted to down in Kandahar, man. Oh, I could see the desire. It the is, desire was there. Yeah, I was there at the same time as you. It was pretty rough. Now you're on your way back to you're on your way to 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 Pakistan via Germany. You're on your way on another Pakistan, trip now. Afghanistan, and India. Okay. Leaving tomorrow. When you when you are world traveling right now, when you're doing your job right now, and you're visiting all those different capitals. Who are you trying to connect? Who are you trying to draw together? Who are you trying to get to read from the same hymnal? Well, the first part of the trip in Germany is to strengthen the international alliance supporting the civilian side of the war. We don't have a civilian organization like NATO, which is essentially a military organization, but the Germans lead the coordination effort. When President Obama and Secretary Clinton gave me this job, uh, uh, there was no other special representative for Afghanistan and Pakistan. Now there are about 35, including seven Muslim countries, <clears throat> from Egypt to Malaysia. And the Germans coordinate this effort, so I go to Germany a lot. Now, when I get to Afghanistan and Pakistan and India, it's a whole different thing. This, this outcome in Afghanistan will be shaped decisively by the relationship between Pakistan and Afghanistan for reasons that you have well reported on. And uh, the Pakistanis and the Afghans have a long historical ambivalence, to put it mildly. In fact, on the day after Pakistan declared independence in August of 1947, the Afghans opposed their entry into the United Nations. <laughs> that little fact is something every Pakistani is taught in school. Yeah. Oh, there was a, the border is unresolved, the Pashtun uh, ethnic group, very large, flanks both sides of the border. And so that historical relationship has been additionally overlain with the drama of the last 30 years. And the relationships between Islamabad and Kabul were very, very bad. Uh, when we came into office, President Obama instructed that one of the core goals should be to bring the two countries closer together. That's why I was given this job, because up to in the previous administration, Afghanistan and Pakistan were handled separately in separate desks. They didn't coordinate. Uh, and we're trying to get them to be more clo closer to one another, building trust. It's a long, difficult process. So that'll be part of a very large agenda in Pakistan. In addition, we've been improve trying to improve U.S. relations with Pakistan. We came in, U.S. popularity was at 9% lowest in the world. Yeah. It's gone up, but not much. Hillary Clinton went there last October and did a spectacular job wading into the crowds, defending America, explaining what we were doing. And it helped with the polls, but it's a long process. We have these groups on water and 
electricity and women's empowerment and education, all of which have been meeting, and I'm going over to, to accelerate that effort. When I was struck when Secretary Clinton was in Pakistan that she was doing um, so much aggressive outreach, trying to describe what America's role is in that part of the country, in, in that part of the world, trying to dispel myths. There's so much anti-American sentiment uh, in, in parts of Pakistan. But she kept getting asked over and over and over again about drone strikes, and she kept having to answer over and over again that she can't talk about that. Obviously, you can't talk about that either. Nobody in government can. CIA operations. What drone strikes? <laughs> well, we know that they're happening, and yet nobody in government can be can explain them or be held accountable for them because they are ostensibly secret. Doesn't that sort of loom very large over any effort to try to improve things between That's America and Pakistan? That's a really Pakistan? clever question. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so your idea is that either talk about what we're not going to talk about or I don't talk about it. <laughs> I know you won't talk about those drone strikes, but how can we improve relations without I ever think bringing if, those things into the realm of I discussable material? I think if you, if you uh, go back to Pakistan today, one of the most interesting things you'll see is that that issue is not as prominent. It hasn't gone away, but isn't prominent as it used to be. Why? Because the Pakistani Taliban... The TTP has been targeting Pakistanis more and more and more. Mm. And anything that can be done to weaken them is welcomed, particularly by the people in the tribal area. These are vicious people, these Pakistani Taliban. <clears throat> and they have done some terrible things. And recently, one of the groups destroyed the largest uh, shrine in Lahore, the greatest shrine of the, uh, of the Sufis in the world and uh, that had a terrible effect and then there was the videotape of the whipping of the young girl the teenager in SWAT and all these things have escalated to get the people really angry and the army the Pakistani army has gone into SWAT it's gone into the tribal areas and anything that can be done to weaken these people is welcomed by more and more people is Pakistan capable of and I mean, when I say Pakistan, I actually mean the Pakistani government, the military, and the intelligence services. Are they capable of dialing up or dialing back the insurgency in Afghanistan? Are they linked enough with the people who are shooting at U.S. troops and coalition troops in Afghanistan that they can really control the tempo? In, in my experience in the U.S. government, uh, I've never seen an intelligence issue in which there's more argument dispute than the one you ask. <clears throat> I'm not going to go into all the details because a lot of this is kind of based on sensitive material. But I think you have to differentiate between the different groups of bad guys that are out there. First you have Al-Qaeda. Then you have the Afghan Taliban. Then you have the Pakistani Taliban I just mentioned. Then you have the LET, the group that targets India, which is more Punjabis, and caused the Mumbai bombing. And then you have, last but definitely not least, the separate group of terrorists called the Haqqani Network, which, as I know you heard on your trip to Afghanistan, is the group that is that goes in from the eastern part of, uh, of Afghanistan right into Kabul, and they attack the Indian embassy and so on. So of all these different groups... The Pakistanis are fighting the Pakistani Taliban very aggressively. They've taken over 4,000 casualties. The Pakistani Taliban is the group that gave the training to the botched Times Square bomber. And they're very, they have begun to target the United States in addition, so we have to pay particular attention to them. And on my trips to Pakistan, the one I'm starting tomorrow, will be my 14th trip since I took this job. Uh, that has been a major subject of discussion. The Afghan Taliban, I think we all feel that we can do more and we want to do more. And we want to work with the Pakistanis to, to further our common interests. Uh, and so on and so forth. Do more against them, do more to disrupt them, even as they take sanctuary in some places and in Pakistan. Put them under more pressure. Yeah. It's a very serious issue because to succeed in a guerrilla war of this sort, sanctuary is the, is the greatest vulnerability. One of the main things that you're working on is how this all ends, whether or not there can be negotiation, whether there can be a political supplement, uh, settlement. Um, whether groups can be brought to, dis to settle their differences essentially through talking rather than through fighting these things out.
If the Afghan government wants to include the Haqqani network in talks, in, resol in, in resolution talks in Afghanistan, what's the U.S. government going to say about that? The Haqqani network blamed, as far as I understand, for the murder of those CIA officers um, in Afghanistan, tie linked to al-Qaeda, certainly. But they're not seen as anathema um, in Pakistan and Afghanistan the way we see them. So if the Afghans want to talk to them, will we stop them? We have vital national security interests in these countries. We've got almost 100,000 troops in the country and more coming. And we have a legitimate role to play in these decisions. And the Khani group is killing Americans. They have shown no interest in meeting our red lines on what they have to do, renounce al-Qaeda, give up their weapons, reintegrate into society, accept the Constitution. So for the leadership of the Haqqani group to participate in some kind of thing, like you talked about, a political settlement in your phrase, that strikes me as a bridge too far. But if the rank-and-file people who fight are, are often very misguided,